Playing Eve on Linux sounds daunting, but what if it wasn't as hard as you thought? What if you just needed someone to explain things in a way that made sense to you? Today I'm going to walk you through setting up Eve on Linux in simple terms for those who have no idea what they're doing. This guide is straight to the point, designed to respect your time, and I'm turning off ads for this video. If things move too quickly, don't be afraid to pause and just in case you follow the instructions but still can't get things to work, don't give up. Come by our EVE on Linux Discord linked in the video description and we'll guide you along as best as possible. For this tutorial, I'll be using a fresh hard drive on my actual computer as I feel tutorials using virtual machines can be misleading. I've chosen Linux Mint Cinnamon Edition for this demonstration, but neither your distribution of Linux nor your chosen desktop environment matter for this tutorial. First, we'll try the standard Steam setup, which is how I personally run Eve. If the launcher doesn't behave for you or other issues pop up, we'll try a Linux specialty launcher called Lutris with an Eve launcher downgrade, which should work for just about everyone with the help of our handy pre-launch script, of course. After we get EVE running either on Steam or Lutris, I'll share a few quality of life tips for new Linux capsuleers, including how to set up multiboxing, manage character settings, and maximize performance. I ask you to believe in yourself, capsuleer. You are capable of this. Okay, I installed Mint, updated my NVIDIA drivers with the driver manager, installed OBS so you could watch, and here we are. First of all, let's install Steam using Mint's built-in application called Software Manager. Once Steam is installed, open it up, log in, and right-click on Eve in your Steam library and select Properties. Now, navigate to the Compatibility tab and enable the option that says Force the use of a specific Steam Play compatibility tool. From the drop-down menu that appears, select Proton Experimental to download what we need. While you're in the properties of EVE and Steam, go to the General tab and add the following to the launch options. Proton underscore no underscore esync equals one, Proton underscore no underscore fsync equals one, and LD underscore preload equals another space, percent command percent. This avoids common lag issues. Next, install EVE as you would any other Steam game. Once it's finished installing, open it up and the launcher should appear. Now, if the launcher doesn't work at this point or later stops working after an update, don't panic, just skip ahead or come back to the Lutris section. If and when the launcher does appear, go ahead and install the game to the default directory and click I already have an account. Now, in the launcher's settings menu, Disable hardware acceleration and restart the launcher. Now go back into the settings menu once again in the EVE launcher and under EVE Online, check the download the full EVE game client option. While you're there, change the DirectX version to 11. This should positively impact performance for virtually everybody. You are now able to play EVE on Linux through Steam just as you would with Windows or Mac. Congratulations. But what if the Steam method doesn't work? Well, the reason tends to boil down to one thing, a broken version of the EVE launcher. Let's try using Lutris, an old version of the launcher that we know works, and a pre-launch script to keep things in order. This should work for literally everyone if you follow the steps precisely. I recommend watching the entire video from this point on and coming back to follow the steps once you've seen what you're in for. Start off by downloading two files from the CCP website, an EXE and a new package. Obviously, be careful downloading executables, but these are from the CCP Games website. It should be credible enough for you. Next, use Mint's Software Manager to install Lutris and Proton Plus. Open up Lutris and then close it down right away so Proton Plus realizes that it's installed. Now, open up Proton Plus and at the very top left corner, there should be a button with a Steam or Lutris icon. Click it and select Lutris. Then, in the main window, select Proton GE and download the latest version. Now it's time to configure Lutris. Open it up again and click the big plus button in the top left corner. Choose Add Locally Installed Game, name the game EVE Online, and set the runner to Wine Runs Windows Games. Under the Games Options tab, point the executable field at the EXE we downloaded earlier. 
This file is probably in your downloads folder, but you may have saved it somewhere else. Next, set the wine prefixed field to your equivalent of slash home slash chlorokin slash games slash eve dash online. Under runner options, set the wine version to Proton GE and uncheck both enable eSync and enable FSync. If you see multiple versions of Proton GE, select latest. Then under system options, add an environment variable of LD underscore preload with no value. Make sure to press enter and click save. Okay, launch the new EVE Online game we just set up in Lutris by double clicking on it. And if it opens up and asks you where to install the client, you can go ahead and close the EVE Online launcher. Now that we've got the EVE launcher set up in Lutris, it's time to employ our pre-launch script to intercept the launcher's attempts at updating and replace it with the stable version. Right click on EVE Online in Lutris and select configure again. In game options, point the executable field from the previous path to your equivalent of slash home slash chlorokin slash games slash eve dash online slash drive underscore c slash users slash chlorokin slash app data slash local slash eve dash online slash eve dash online dot exe. <laughs> this will be in the video description. Next, navigate to that dot new package we downloaded earlier and extract it into a folder. Go through the folder and copy the contents of slash lib slash net 45 to slash home slash chlorokin slash documents slash eve launcher. If there's not a folder there, make one. Then copy the script from the video description into a text editor and save it as eve dash prelaunch Dot sh and put it into your documents folder. And before you save the script, make sure to change the target line to actually match your prefix location. Right click on eve-prelaunch.sh and go to properties and toggle on run as an executable. Back in Lutris, right click on our Eve online game once again and select configure. Go to the systems option tab and ensure that the advanced mode is toggled on at the top. Scroll down to the pre-launch script section and point it at our eve-prelaunch.sh script in the documents folder. Enable the wait for pre-launch script completion toggle and you're done. Just like in the scene method, make sure your launcher is set to DirectX 11, the full game is downloaded and that hardware acceleration is disabled. That's it, you are done. With this setup, our pre-launch script manages to intercept the updated version and replace it with the launcher version that we know works, which is 1.9.4. Now that you've got Eve running on Linux, let's talk about some of those launcher options we toggled on or off earlier. If we don't disable a hardware acceleration, it may cause some extreme lag with the launcher in addition to misaligned clicks in the menus. Disabling it fixes this instantly. Checking the download the full game option prevents streaming of data while you're playing, which should improve performance whenever you reach a new area. And lastly, using DirectX 11 is incredibly important because we're playing Eve through a compatibility layer that struggles with the X12. Plus, the X12 is not very performant in Eve, even on Windows. Speaking of Windows, your settings are buried in the app data folder over there. On Linux, the same is true, but the app data folder itself is buried in a labyrinth of directories. Depending on how you set up Eve, it's going to change your directory. But for me, since I just use Steam, Mine looks like, notice how my path references the C drive and app data like Windows would? That's because we're basically tricking the game into thinking we're on Windows without actually fully emulating it. This folder is where your settings reside and you can manipulate these files like you would on Windows. I suggest adding a shortcut to this folder somewhere that's easily accessible. If you're using Lutris though, the directory might look like this instead. Now I personally copy and paste files and just simply rename them, but there are settings managers out there and some capsuleers on our Discord even set up a sim linking script to make things super breezy. You can check that out in the description. For multiboxing on Linux, a few considerations must be made. First of all, it can certainly be done, even with an extreme number of accounts. Although some have Evo Preview working under certain conditions, most Eve players using Linux use a window manager and workspaces to control switching their clients around. For example, if you pin three clients to three workspaces, one, two, and three, you could use your window manager's hotkeys to switch between the workspaces, effectively allowing easy client switching. I personally choose to use a bash script to avoid having to use workspaces since I do recording and streaming 
Uh, but understand, there are other options out there if you loathe workspaces in the first place. Whatever solution you choose to multi-box with, you'll want to understand throttling. Throttling is a feature of the EVE client itself that cuts back on FPS to reduce consumption of resources when multi-boxing. There are two kinds of throttling in EVE, unfocused and minimized, and they are exactly as they sound. However you choose to manage your client switching, be sure to have your inactive windows throttled. Workspaces should do this. Lastly, and while a single boxer could probably get away with avoiding this step, for multiboxing, it's imperative you disable VSync. Turning this on will cause all types of problems when switching between clients from lag to straight up freezes. So turn off vertical sync. Even though EVE wasn't intended to be played on Linux and will likely never receive official support again, the developers aren't going out of the way to block us from using non-sanctioned operating systems. However, if something goes wrong, it's on us to help each other out to get it sorted. I encourage you to come by our EVE on Linux Discord if you have any questions or just like to chat. Our server bans elitism and focuses strongly on guiding people just like you to success. It's also just a nice place to hang out and learn about Linux. Find the link in the video description and I hope to see you there. I'd like to give a special shout out to Teravin over on the Discord for helping so many people with their issues and providing us with the pre-launch script for Lutris. Also Halb for the Simlink script. But most importantly, I'd like to thank you for being brave enough to try EVE on Linux. Good luck out there.